Last time, the biggest land mammals ever. This episode, we jump forward in time to witness mankind's beginnings in Africa some three million years ago. Some animals can show emotion. These unique creatures are reacting to the death of one of their group with what can only be described as grief. It is the eldest female who has eventually lost her fight with malaria. Beside her body, her three-year-old orphan. His mother was the most important thing in his life and without her, survival in a difficult world will become almost impossible. This is the northern end of the great African Rift Valley. A staggering landscape created by fractures in the continent. This is the cradle of evolution for mankind. The world has been transformed in the last few million years by one small plant. Where once there was forest, there are now vast tracts of grassland. And with grass have come new species of grazing mammals. At first glance, you might think you were in the 21st century, but there are important differences. The big cats are actually of the saber-tooth variety, although these ones only have small sabers. And creatures like Dinotherium might look like elephants, but they are three times the size, with tusks that curve downwards for stripping bark off trees. <coughs> But on the edge of the forest live the most remarkable animals of all. A type of ape has evolved that clearly shows the first signs of becoming more human. What makes them closer to us than other apes is not their brains, which are only one third of the size. It's not their skin, which is hairy. It's something they do that other apes just don't. Something that will one day lead them to be described as a missing link. These apes walk upright. These are Australopithecus. Go back 200,000 generations and your relatives would look something like this. They live in groups with complex social structures and are also very political animals. This is Gray, the eldest of the group. He is 30 years old and the top male, but only for as long as the females want him to be. Females are just two thirds of the size of the males, but Gray needs their support if he wants to stay in charge. Unfortunately, he's no longer getting it. <coughs> 
With the death of the lead female, this noisy individual called Babel has now replaced her, and she is no fan of Grey. Bottom of the heap is the orphaned male called Blue. At three years old, his social skills are as yet undeveloped. With the death of his mother, he is becoming an outsider. But in truth, the whole group has problems. Last year, there were 12 of them. As a result of malaria, they now number just eight. This has led to tension within the hierarchy. A younger, larger male called Hercules is starting to challenge Grey. These fights are less violent than other primates. Baboons, for example, have large canines and bite each other. Australopithecus have small canines, and their fights are mostly show. Grey has managed to put Hercules in his place, for now at least. 